Welcome to my third video commentary. Sometimes I slip on these. I apologize for that. Today I'm going to read you a parable that Jesus said um, in Mark chapter 12. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it and digged a place for the wine vat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And at the appointed season he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some, having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved. He sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said amongst themselves, This is the heir, come. Let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What should, therefore, the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. Now this parable that Jesus gave is actually talking about himself. He is giving a synopsis of God's plan for the human race, not just for Israel, but for the whole of humanity. And it is actually a parable about himself. And he states at the very last that this was the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Why is it marvelous in our eyes? Because salvation is of the Lord. The Lord alone saves. And this parable lines up perfectly with Isaiah 53, which I will read to you now. It says, Who hath believed our report? And this is very important. Who has believed our report? The report of what? The report of the son who was sent to the husbandman, which is, allegorically speaking, the world. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of many sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, our sicknesses, our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes or wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And 
Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when he shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul even until death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin in many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And herein is found the love of God, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He is the Son who went to the husbandman in the vineyard, and they mocked him, and they beat him, and they killed him. But God has made him the chief cornerstone, upon which all men who come believing shall be saved. And this is why Isaiah starts out in 53, who hath believed our report. And he goes on to say in verse 2 of chapter 53, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. We who come in by believing God's report are that dry ground. His seed is planted in our heart and it springs up and his root remains. He is the root that springs up out of our dry ground. He gives life to all who simply trust on him for it. For as Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was put upon him, and by his stripes or wounds we are healed. Why did God do this? Because all we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us have turned unto our own ways. And the Lord God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus says, He who believes on me has everlasting life. But he who believes not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Jesus came into this world for one purpose, one purpose only, to seek and save that which is lost. He is not saying, Repent of your sins, he is not saying live a good life, though we should. But the bottom line is that's not salvation. A person can repent of their sins all day long and still wind up in God's eternal prison for lawbreakers. It's not about repenting of your sins or being sorry for your sins. It's about trusting on Christ and the payment he made on your behalf in the court of God. Imagine this. You're standing before the Creator. You're standing in His court. You owe the court a billion dollars and you have absolutely no way to pay that debt. When suddenly, someone you don't even know loves you so much, that they step up and pay the debt, pay the fine on your behalf. How would you feel about that person? And then the judge, the righteous judge, receives the payment. And he says, while you are guilty, while you deserve to go to prison for the rest of your life, I see that the payment is in place, that the requirements of this court are completely satisfied, and therefore you are free to go. That is what Jesus did in a very real sense. He, out of love for 
humanity out of love for his creation because he was God in the flesh doned himself a body became in form and fashion as a man like us but without sin lived a perfect moral life fulfilled all of the law on our behalf and then though there was no violence in his mouth neither was there any deceit in his tongue he willingly went outside of the walls of Jerusalem and went up the side of a hill called Golgotha and there he willingly laid down his life for you for me and then three days later he physically raised from the dead and he could do this because he's God and now he's saying that it is not his will for any to perish but all to come to repentance and that word repent repentance simply means to change your mind stop trusting on yourself on your money on your false religions and stop trusting on the things of this world that perish with the using and if you'll put your trust on Christ who laid himself down for you then scripture declares that you will be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness believes and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Jesus says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life for the Son of God did not come into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved and you are saved simply by believing Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life he who believeth on me though he were dead yet shall he live and he whosoever liveth and believeth on me shall never die and then he asks this very important question believest thou this do you believe this because it's right upon that point that hinges everything else do you believe this and if you believe the report if you believe the report then God applies Christ's payment to you personally he saves you forever he who believes on me Jesus said has everlasting life anyway thanks for listening to my ramble uh, you have a blessed week be safe out there I know things are getting pretty dark but if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you shall be saved and Christ also promises that when you see all these things happening like we're seeing in the world today all congealing together at one time in an abundance then do not be afraid do not fear but look up for your redemption draweth nigh